Nadine Manuko, uh, Manuko Tongiabalu hurled her cousin as he bled to death on a street in Grey Lynn. Less than three years later, she had faked a pregnancy, falsified documents to get a job as a nanny and kidnapped her baby, a uh, baby she was trusted to look after. Today, Manuko Tongiabalu was sentenced to three years in prison after pleading guilty to charges of kidnapping, dishonestly using a docu document, burglary, making an intimate visual recording and a criminal nuisance. Our Auckland reporter Edward Gay filed this report and just a note of you're watching you'll be able to see the CCTV footage released by the family of the kidnapping. He was walking towards me with his hands over his throat and then I said to him cuz are you okay and he was like yep and then we walked back to where the fight had originally started and then Luke fell to the ground and then heaps of blood. Started. That was Nadine Manako Tongiavalu giving evidence at the High Court in Auckland in 2015 when 17-year-old Vincent Skeen was on trial for the murder of her cousin Luke Tipene. Skeen was eventually jailed for manslaughter. Today the court heard how the killing and subsequent court case had a lasting effect on Manako Tongiavalu. The 21-year-old's lawyer, Panama Le Aoane, posed this question. What was going on in Nadine's mind when she weaved this web of deception? Mr Leao Ane said Manako Tongiavalu was blamed by some for the death of Luke Tipene and suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. After a relationship soured, Manako Tongiavalu posted naked photos of the man and harassed him online. Amid this background, Manako Tongiavalu faked a pregnancy. She wore a baby belly, held a baby shower and later falsified documents to get a job as a nanny. The parents she worked for told the court today that it took years and several rounds of IVF for them to conceive. The mother, who can't be named, said in her victim impact statement the pregnancy had been difficult and her daughter was eventually born by emergency C-section. She had little family support and there were also feeding issues. Nada knew all of this. I had shared this very personal information with her. She knew how precious was to me and to us and what she meant to me which makes it all the more disturbing and upsetting. She said the kidnapping was an absolute violation of trust. We welcomed Nadine into our home thinking she would be kind, caring and honest. Instead she had prepared a suite of extremely detailed, articulate and elaborate lies. It's disturbing to know that Nadine had been planning this for many months, looking for a family to target. The father said Manako Tongiavalu woke him to tell him the house had been robbed. He went to his daughter's cot to find she'd gone. The father said he and his wife panicked, not knowing where their daughter was. Later, he reviewed the CCTV footage captured on his home security system that showed a balaclava-clad woman coming in the back door and leaving with his daughter. I believe that Nadine coordinated the whole event in detail with meticulous planning and preparation. She appeared to do this in the most cold, calculating, malicious, manipulative and unscrupulous manner by taking advantage of a family that was in an incredibly vulnerable situation. The mother said Manako Tongiavalu kept up the charade. While <coughs> waiting with me in my distressed state in the police car, Nadine was very calm and very quiet. I believe she has no remorse and is a callous and calculating individual who has deceived and hurt many, many people in her path. The woman caught on CCTV cameras was Manako Tongiavalu's cousin, Sydney Tulapapa. Tulapapa was discharged without conviction, but in a rare move, the Solicitor General is appealing that decision. At Tula Papa's sentencing, it was revealed Manako Tongiavalu had told her that the baby was hers and that she'd put her up for adoption and now wanted her back. The baby was returned safe and well later that afternoon. In sentencing, Judge Nicola Mathers took time off for Manako Tongiavalu's mental health issues and her early guilty plea. This court, indeed any court in New Zealand, will not tolerate this type of offending. Not only have you offended in relation to the kidnapping, but your other actions, again over a significant period, have torment, tormented a young man whose family took you into their home. Manako Tongiavalu told the court her time in prison awaiting sentence has been the best thing that's happened to her. Judge Mathers read this excerpt from her letter. 
You say today uh, you have heard from people that do not believe I deserve a second chance and I don't blame them. However, I am here to plead with you to see past my mistakes and focus on the positive changes that have come from this incarceration. Sorry is truly not enough to prove how remorseful I am. Manako Tongi Avalu has spent 11 months in custody. In a month's time, she will have served the minimum one third of her sentence and be eligible for parole. Motihoa Takoatiahiahi, ko Edward Gayahoe.